त त त Let's start with today's Oxford book with the Vikings. Vikings did not spend their time always raiding other lands and all that sort. In fact, even though they were from Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, they usually also did not raid other countries as much as you probably expected them to. They did raid villagers and all that stuff and plunder them for all that sweet, 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 sweet gold. But however, they also, like, I mean, everything seemed to be going on as a hierarchical class system, too. Turns out that when a Viking chief dies, uh, they call them chiefs, basically, his sons have an equal right to the crown. And having an equal right to the crown means that, well, you're going to have to go for a war of succession. Although you might start as a local chief, basically, you, usually, if you eventually expand your land from his to this, and then you keep conquering from this to this, then, well, you got yourself a good, great chief. You're a good chief. You have a very gigantic empire, well, almost. And Vikings will always raid, and they'll plunder for anything they want. Their main weapons are used... They, yes, they do use shields, although not the way that this woman is using there. And they do use battle axes, but not the way that they're using. And they all even use spears. They spend their time always farming, fishing, and, of course, hunting. The Viking society was also split into these three main parts. The Jarls were the best and richest people. They were the literal society kings. They were the chiefs and they were at the top. They were also local chiefs and they were basically the richest people there. They were also some government officials and they usually kept slaves. The Carls were the middle class. They composed mainly of farmers, merchants, and craftspeople. And they were usually the people who went to war and they were the ones who raided the villages and they also were the ones who actually took home the slaves and sold them. The Thralls were the slaves. They were basically, yeah, like a, a par- property. If they were caught running away, they could be killed at the spot or they could be executed. Women Thralls were forced to cook and without pay and they were there because like, they had to do any work that their owner wanted them to do. Viking children did not go to school. They actually helped their parents with the cooking and when they were either 15 or 16 years old, they were finally classified as adults. And all the council members, or all the council members, always hold a big meeting whenever they did, and they called it this simple name, the Sing. Not something even fancy, not something really good, but they just called it the Sing. Many Vikings actually built their settlements near rivers because, like rivers, without water, you're basically dead and all that. And fish and fishermen, fisher Viking, fishermen Viking, yeah, fishermen Vikings usually use nets to catch their fish. They also sometimes use harpoons and stuff, and they usually caught salmon and trout. They caught seabirds to, to eat and took their eggs from the nest to eat also. However, before they had coins, basically the Vikings literally traded with soul and pieces of silver, and that is exactly what they did. They used They had their own system of scales to use fair deals. And when Viking merchants came home, they basically came back with the chess pieces, which is exactly why chess was very important and also a very popular game in the Viking world. In fact, when they actually run out of things to make traditional chess, they started using amber and created their own version of the chess pieces too, so the rules were still the same. Viking trading ships were 5 meters wide and 16 meters long. If this was the ship itself, then the cargo would be here, the trader would be here, there will be a gigantic sail here, and there will be literally a rudder at here to transport the ship itself to its next place. Fucking homes were usually the traditional homes that you would probably think of. Those houses with the satch roofs, and basically you were probably thinking of those satch roofs that you have at your home. Well, actually, they had the several rooms. Usually they never had a second floor, but usually they did spin to split the rooms into several pieces. They had a dining room, the living room, uh, something like a living room. They obviously had a bedroom, and they had probably their own personal rooms, and they had a storeroom. Who doesn't? They also had things called longboats, which were 20 to 25 meters long, and it had, the mast was also 12 meters long, and each boat could hold up to 40 people, and they, usually uh, traditional ways actually show shields being stuck onto the sides and uh, having that little wavy thing at the, at the, like, here, let me draw one, like, traditional longboat. Like that, shields, and a, like little sail, a mast, and yeah. 
They were usually known for their jewelry, and they even have their own little alphabet that was only used for telling stories. There's really no written presentation, and Viking chess pieces were pretty weird too, and they looked awesome too. And uh, yeah, I guess they did look a bit like the chess pieces that we use to play nowadays, except they were more like people like. The Age of Discovery and Exploration! Basically, this is what most people actually call the Golden Age. This is a time when people from nowadays actually found out that people from before them were actually smarter than them. And that as they were going in the future, they decided to forget these things because they said, God, it was all the answer. We all need to do just ask God. And they're like, oh no, we just, we, we were, oh God, you lied to us. Do you even exist now? Basically, that seems to happen. And about 600 years ago, this is what seemed to happen. Before the age of discovery and exploration, lots of other things seemed to happen too. There was this thing called the Astrolabe from 1480, or somewhere-ish between then. And people were pretty obsessed with astronomy, so they actually built very large observatories to study the skies, to study the stars, to study literally everything in the pitch black sky other than those stars that aren't pitch black. And there were lots of other things that seemed to happen too. They started using currencies, like coins, and I guess the concept of the paper bill actually started in there. China usually exported spices, silks, and porcelain. The Byzantines usually sold and used uh, silver and gold vessels, coins, merchants, and all those other medicines, cloths, and all those other things to actually trade with. Arabia were horses, camels, and uh, animal skins. Yemen used cloaks, giraffes, giraffes, armor, and the dye of indigo. Egypt exported fine cloth and donkeys. Central Asia did slaves, armor, uh, helmets, grapes, and sugar. And Persia used plums, soft woolen clothes, honey, fruit drinks, and glass. Yes, glass! It was basically a golden age in the Middle East. And why did this happen, first of all? Why is there a golden age, first of all? It's because that these people decided that they, I think we are dumb, and I just want to prove that we're not dumb, so I'll go explore for new lands. Just to show everyone else that there is an end, there's no end to Africa, and that there are monsters on the other side of Asia, if there is another side of Asia. And then, this is what happened. Pedro Columbus asked Queen Isabella to do this. Hey, can I have money to go to Asia? I, mean, I go to India, because I have an idea of, most people go to the East, but since Portugal, since uh, Portugal controls, the Spain controls that, and Portugal controls that, I will want to go to the West, because no one will control that. And he went there, and he went smack, not into India, but into the Americas, the New World. And he, did, and he didn't even know about it, and he didn't even admit saying that I did not find a new world. He really wanted to find a route to India. He didn't even care if he found two whole new continents. Basically, everyone didn't even know that existed until this guy named Ari Amerigo Vespucci came and compared those continental like coastlines and like they're way different by like a lot. And they actually start considered calling it, calling it the the continent Colombia, but then they decided since America since this America guy figured out why not call it America? And then we have literally a place in America called Colombia. Oh yeah, Christopher Columbus found us all out in the late 1400s, 1492, somewhere-ish. And life at sea was not very pleasant. If you want life at sea in the past days, you will have to go for tuck with bacteria and worm-filled tucks, scurvy, uh, a very good, very, very, very salty air, and humid weather, and possibly storms, hurricanes, and all those other things too. You also had hard biscuits, and usually food uh, was probably not fresh. You su usually was rotten. Oh, I hear the Renaissance coming. Oh! This is where printing presses are invented. This is where the rebirth of old people, the old new people, finding out that old people were much smarter than them, and then learning new ways to be like old people, and then becoming old people. Rebirth of the Greek literature. Rebirth of William. No, William Shakespeare didn't exist yet. Rebirth of uh, Homer. Rebirth of Virgil. Rebirth of of, of Alexander the Great, rebirth of Houdini. Houdini's in the future, Dota Brain. All right, good enough. And the rebirth and the reinvention of the printer. And time for the Tudors. Basically, this is what happened. Henry VII married Elizabeth of Yorkshire in 1486, and they had a son. Henry VIII, who had six wives. He chopped up four of their heads because, the well, number... He chopped up four of their heads because number one, he, uh, most of them, uh, the four of them he, he chopped up actually gave him daughters instead of sons. And he was super annoyed by those wives saying, You are something wrong with 
you lady, you only giving me girls. Buy ass. Smash. And then later on, there's this one woman who gave him one son, and like, yay, a son! And then that wife died, and he grieved for her so much, and then remarried again, and got a daughter again, like, yeah! And then realized that his son was sickly after he died, uh, married to his sixth wife. His son became king, but only for a short time, then died, and then his old, and then her, his older daughter her his older sister mary became here and became like bloody mary and that got her executed and then came elizabeth the first who was a rightful and great queen she did not get her diamond jubilee though ah and her tutor home was basically a home built for entertainment Gentlemen were the richest people of society, basically the people who could afford all that fancy stuff, fancy, fancy stuff. Citizens, they, well, they, they lived in towns. They were also rich, and but not as rich as the gentlemen. They're like uh, middle class richie. Also, only 5% of the population of the Tudor time was citizens. Yeoman, uh, this is how you spell it. They were the farmers, and the farmers, they were pretty awesome. They either owned land or even just worked on land that was owned by someone else. They usually had, a, like, a medium-sized farmhouse that was just good enough for their supplies and all that. And they had usually some cr crops, like wheat, or barley, or even livestock, like cows and sheep. And nowadays, Tudor homes are now used as, like, a, like a museum. And a Tudor's education actually depended on how rich his or her father was. Basically, this is what happened. Until a boy or a girl or a child was old enough to become an apprentice or to help with the family on their farm or whatever, then they stopped going to school. Basically, hello! Oh, you're going to... You're, you have to... Oh, you're old enough to help your mom and dad? Congratulations! Everyone else isn't graduating yet, so you're the only one graduating. Congratulations on a very unexpected graduation! Yeah, something like that. And this is usually what happened. When there was like a rich guy who was being naughty, he was uh, he, like his a uh, whipping boy was whipped instead of him. How lucky. And Latin was like the most, like the language that they use, like businessmen and all the important people use in Europe. So basically you had to learn Latin in school. I guess it sucks to be you. But like some schools today, money actually like depend, your education depended on how rich your family was. And usually, only the cleverest children went to study at university. Yikes. And there were two universities in the Tudor England, Oxford and Cambridge. Tudor portraits, they don't really tell us that much, except for those symbols that are on the portraits. Queen Elizabeth I's portraits actually were never, almost most of them weren't approved because of some little details that the queen herself didn't really enjoy and like. Turns out that the crown uh, shows that Elizabeth is a queen and the collar on her portrait on like the ruff was very fashionable so that made her more fashionable. That Elizabeth is pointing to America where English people were beginning to settle so her, ac her fingers are actually pointing across the whole continent on that portrait. And only the richest people wore black clothing. Also, I guess that's more for mourning, but sure. And now, for the story of London! In 43 CE, the Romans are arriving in London and they build, like, build a bridge over the River Thames. 61 CE, London was like burnt down by Roman enemies. It was quickly rebuilt, though. 410 CE, now that the Romans left, uh, left London and England and Britain itself right now, uh, Britain was uh, like every man for himself. And new tribes, those Germanic tribes invaded and they took over it. They vanquished the Celts as if they were like the Piglins in the new 2023 MC Legends game. 886 CE, in this one, London became the capital of Britain, both Scotland and England. 1078 CE, this is when the Tower of London was built, and it was used as like that central prison that we nowadays use. And then in 1665, the Great Plague of London killed lots of the population. It was like a fifth, like 20% of the population, which is still a lot of the population. And then, just one year later, the Great Fire of London destroyed uh, like 80% of London's buildings. In the 1000 and 735 CE, 10 of the Downing Street beep, became the house of the Prime Minister's, like, Prime Minister's Prime Minister. And this year, 1879 CE, it became clear that this is the year when Britain's first police force was established. And from 1837 to 1870 CE, this is when the current House of 
parliament was was being built. And then from 1939 to 1945, it was World War II. Children were being evacuated into the London underground to other countryside places where they were not where it was not the blitz. It was not bombed at all. They were moved there so that they could be safe and that when the war was over, they would be reunited with their surviving parents. So that's a pretty tragic story of London. Nowadays, today, London is still a very awesome place and it's still a very awesome thing and also a very awesome city where you can go to, visit to, and even talk to. And because if you're an American, you can still talk to them, sort of. And that will still work out well because you guys both speak similar English, which is pretty similar. All you have to do is switch a few words, so yeah. Yeah, whatever. And just remember that, that London has a very rich history and that has been destroyed countless times, but we have always rebuilt it. Even if there's a world war going on. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And I hope to see you guys in my next episode too. So, until next time, turn on out. Peace. Bye-bye!